shake me up and clean me up so I won't miss heaven. Shake me up and clean me up so I won't miss heaven. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Bible study. And may the Most High bless you. I pray that everybody is having a wonderful, blessed day as we thank the Most High for so much. I want to talk about how the Most High shapes us up, how he will shake us up and remove all of the bad things from around us, all within us, so that we continue to stay on the right path. I want to go back to uh, Romans chapter 11, and we're going to look at verses um, 11 through 24. We know that this is Paul, and um, Apostle Paul wrote this book to the church in Rome. And what I like about the book of uh, Romans, it shows us how Yahshua's death on the cross made us right with the Most High. It shows us how to live a good life as a true believer. And when you look at Romans uh, chapter 11, but those first verses 1 through 10, you see how the Most High was saying that he did not reject his people. He did not turn his back on Israel in spite of how Israel, you know, disrespected the Most High, turned their back on the Most High, he's still showing that he did not reject his people. So when we move down to verses 11 through 24, Paul is talking to a different crowd here. He's talking to the Gentiles. He's talking about how the Gentiles will be saved. So now we see who's doing the talking, who is talking to and who are the important characters in this chapter? Now, I love this passage because it talks about finding common ground. And then it goes into talking about how the Most High prunes and graft us. And if you are a farmer looking at this video, then you can really understand how this, this is so important because to prune something, especially like a... a, a um, branches from a tree or we could say a bush or a plant so when you start cutting off those old branches that ain't doing too good no way so it do what make the, make the tree grow better and you start talking about grafting grafting joins two plants into one plant and the most time is showing us how in spite of how Israel stumbled they still have a chance to get it right. Now, I don't know about y'all, but the most I had to prune and graft me. He had to take away some people. He had to take away some stuff out of me. He had to take away a whole lot of stuff, especially in family, that I didn't need just so I could move forward. And let me tell you something, when the most I prunes you, it's for the best. You can't sit up and worry about how people are going to feel what they think about you, you got to move forward. And it's so amazing to me because he took a person like Saul who was converted over into Paul. So once he pruned old Saul up and he was converted into Paul because we know what happened on the Damascus Road, Paul became such a powerful man for the most time. And he used Paul because Paul was so out of ignorance, such a persecutor against the Christians. He thought what he was doing was right out of ignorance until he knew better, he started doing better. So if you have your Bibles, once again, we're going to Romans chapter 11, verses 11 through 24. Now verse 11 says, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their, sal through their fall, salvation is coming to the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Now I love this because it it started out saying, say then have they stumbled. Now, when you look at a person stumble a lot of times, some people can stumble and never hit the ground. They can stumble and catch their balance. And I look at this with, with, with what Paul is saying here. They stumbled so hard, but they didn't fall all the way to where they couldn't get back up again. I remember back in my drinking days when I used to get drunk as a skunk, I would stumble. And, and then times I would stumble and hit the ground hard. And sometimes I will stumble but never fall. And when you stumble, 
and fall. If you do fall, the question is, how are we getting back up? So he's saying here once again, do I mean that the people of Israel fell so hard that they could never get up again? No. They failure made it possible for the Gentiles to be saved. And this will make the people of Israel in so many ways jealous because salvation came through the Jews. Now when you look at that, he's showing us also how people, other people can learn off of your stumbling. The most things I learned in my life, even to now, is how I've learned off of watching other people's downfalls. You know, people, your parents, anybody can tell you how to live all they, all they want. They can tell you this and tell you that, but you still going to have to make your own mistakes, stumble, fall, and learn from it. Get back up from it again. Verse 12 says, Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the dimension of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. Look at this. Powerful. If the rest of the world, people, were helped so much by Israel's sin and laws, they would be helped even more by their full return. So Paul said that by what they done, the others in the world, like the Gentiles, was enriched. And Gentiles, another thing for Gentiles just simply mean nations. So they watched what the Jews done as they sinned and fell, and they learned from it. And in so many words, they kind of got put in the place where the Jews was at. So that would make them, once again, as verse 11 says, jealous in so many ways. Look at verse 13. For I speak to you Gentiles in as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Paul shows his authority here in verse 13. I magnify my office. I've been called to do this. I am now speaking to you Gentiles, and as long as I am the apostle to you, I will take my job very seriously. See, Paul stated his credentials so the Gentiles would not misunderstand his authority. He didn't say all that to boast and brag and stick his chest out about who he was. He didn't want them to misunderstand his authority. He was the apostle. He had been called to bring the gospel to them. He said he magnified or glorified his office. Now, I love this because Paul stated this purpose as he said glorifying and magnifying his service as an apostle to the Gentiles. It wasn't to get to, it wasn't to gain the attention of the Gentiles, but to gain his Jewish brethren in so many ways. Because his brethren had failed so hard. And Paul wanted to do all he could to make sure his brethren didn't miss heaven. Verse 14 says, If by any means I may provoke to immolation them which are my flesh and might save, of, save some of them. Now, we know that the Most High does the saving. And the sad thing is when I think about this verse, we can do all we can to reach so many people and it's still going to be so many that's not going to be saved. He's saying in verse 14, I hope if I do this this way, once again, it's going to make some of my own people jealous enough to be saved. His desire, Paul's desire, was to make the Jews jealous of the place they had given up to the Gentiles. He wanted them to be saved once again. He said that he hoped to save some of them. You know what Paul was doing? He was trying to convince them who Yahshua really was because so many of the Jews didn't believe. They kept rejecting. Verse 15. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? When Israel rejected the Most High, once again, the rest of the people in the world were able to turn to the most high. So when they see that then, then when the most high brings, when Israel turn from their wicked ways, and I like to say God is married, the most high is married to Israel. 
But then in so many ways, he had to separate himself from Israel. But when the most time make friends back with Israel, it's going to be just like bringing the dead back to life. Paul warned the Gentiles once, once again, don't misunderstand the most high's purpose in bringing good out of the stumbling of the Jews. He used a stumble once again to get the Gentiles right. The Jews had stumbled. They had cut themselves off in so many ways from the spiritual life. But they wasn't falling. They hadn't fell all the way. They still had a chance to get it right. Verse 16. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Now we see in verse 16, this is an illustration Paul gives her. Some may say an analogy. He goes to talking about the first fruit. If part of the batch of dough is made holy by being offered to the most high, then all of the dough is holy. I like that. When you look at them in Israel, they knew something about bread, the unleavened bread. They used bread a lot back then. In other words, also, if the roots of a tree are holy, the rest of the tree is holy too. Now, notice how Paul used the first fruit. When he said that the lump would be holy if the first fruit was holy, I thought about what the Most High gave in his best. His only begotten, unique son. Your first is your best. This Paul once again uses dough, bread. That's what they ate. That's what they offered at times. In the Old Testament, in the book of Numbers, you, you will see where they had to offer up a, a heave offering of their dough. So what we see here in, in, in chapter 11 of Romans, verse 16 here, he spoke first of what? The grain. And then he said, the lump is also holy. If the grain is holy, so when harvest time comes, then what? The bread will be made also holy. Great analogy that Paul used here. Once again, if the root be holy, so are the branches. Who is our root? Hmm. Who is the lamb? And after he uses, once again, this, this first fruit, I think about Yahshua. Then once again, Paul spoke, he spoke of the lump. Think about Israel also. I'm just in the spiritual aspect. Israel as a whole. Then he turned to the root system of the grain and showed that it also is set apart. What holy mean? Set apart. Let's move to verse 17. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partakers of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Hmm. Now, look at that verse 17. Very powerful. Um, another illustration, another analogy, we could say. But this time, instead of talking about the bread, Paul switches it to an illustration of an olive tree. So those are those who was led astray in unbelief, those were the branches that were broken off. They was no longer considered a living part of the tree. Once again, that don't necessarily mean that they was cast away forever. But the Gentiles, the branches from the wild olive tree, will bear the same fruit as the good olive tree. So we see Jews, Gentiles in this in this uh, analogy here, illustration here. Because this shows um, how long-suffering, how powerful the Most High is. But we also know the Most High have a cut-off cut point. See, a lot of people keep playing around with their lives, thinking we got so much time while we're using grace and mercy as a license to sin. But there's going to be a cut-off time when and you're going to have to give an account. And it's either going to be the lake of fire or it's going to be eternal life with the Father. But we all have a choice to make. And some of us are choosing the wrong choice. Verse 18 says, 
Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. <laughs> I love verse 18. Don't think you better than Israel. Don't think you are better than the branches that was cut away because you're not. You're just listening and you, you, you operating in faith where they not right now. But don't think that you are better Gentiles than the Jews. I love this because in other words, remember that you are not supporting the roots of that tree. Its roots are supporting you. So Paul, once again, in verse 18, he warns the, the Gentiles not to boast against the branches that was cut off. Although the Gentiles were were grafted in into the, the good olive tree, but they don't suppose to boast or brag about it. If you boast, Paul say, know for sure that you are not the one supporting the Jews, but the Jews are the ones supporting you. Let's move to verse 19. Thou would say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Hmm. Maybe you think these branches were cut away so you could be put in their place. Well, is that really the case? Now, when I think about verse 19, it made me think about so much because I hear a lot of people saying the Most High has gave up on the Jews. He don't care about the Jews no more. I'm talking about the real Jews, the true Jews. They done been cut away. They all the way cut off. That's, that's not what they're saying. Because the Most High don't want nobody to perish. He said that in his word. I don't know how many times. So the chance for the Jews and the Gentiles is a chance for everybody to come to the Most High. So some say that the Jews were broken off and that the Most High is only working with the Gentiles. The Most High is working with all of us. Let's look at um, verse 20. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. In other words, that's true enough, but they were cut away because they did not have faith. And you are where you are because you have faith, Gentiles. Once again, don't be proud. This verse 20 says, the main reason the Jews were broken off was because of unbelief. When you go back to Moses' day, why did they didn't make it in the promised land? Unbelief is something you shouldn't want to have. You know, you think about the book of Hebrews, you know why that book was wrote? Because of their unbelief. The fallen Jews here we see was once again broken off. They was pruned out of the good tree. And they left to wither and die. But they could have another chance to get back on that tree. Paul said that the Gentiles stood by faith, y'all. But then look at the end of this. He said, be not high-minded, but fear. What does high-minded mean in so many ways? Don't be arrogant. Don't be cocky. Don't be stuck on yourself. But fear. Fear the most high in the way of respect. Verse 21 says, But if God spared not the natural branches, Take heed, lest he also spare not thee. In other words, if the Most High cut away the natural branches, don't you think he would do the same to you, Gentiles? You would also be treated the same way if you don't get it right. See, I love this because the Most High is not a respecter person. He even shows us, yeah, I have my chosen ones, but I cut them off too if they don't get it right. Verse 22 Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fail, severity but toward thee, goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. This shows you how powerful the Most High is. How hard he can be, and then how loving he can be. He was hard on the ones who fail, but he was also loving and, and, and kind. So in other words, if you keep on trusting and being obedient, you don't have nothing to worry about. But if you keep being disobedient and keep on believing, then you'll be cut away. 
Paul shows what happened to the unbelieving Jews in, in this scripture. Let's look at verse 23. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. Powerful verse 23. 23 shakes me up because I thought about how messed up I was in my life. But he said, I can still graft you back in. If those other branches will start having faith, they can be made part of the tree again. In other words, if Israel would get back on the right track and start believing and trusting in the Most High, doing His will, they can be made right back a part of that same tree. Why? Because the Most High have the power to bring them back, put them back. You see some true grace right here, y'all. After all the times the Jews turned away, even the ones who put him on the cross, yet the Most High still didn't turn his back on them. If they do not walk around in unbelief, they're going to be all right. See, this shook me up. Because I done failed, I don't know how many times. Still fall at times. But he took us anyway. He said if they turn from their unbelief once again, they shall be grafted in again. Somebody right now may have fell out of the tree. You can get back in it. You can be grafted back in if you get on the right track. What a mighty most high we serve. Many people I see right now are trying to earn the most high's love and favor. But my, my question to you is, can you really earn it? Look at this olive tree. The most high can graft the broken out twigs into the good olive tree again. Just because you may have stumbled, you haven't failed for good. Some people fall and want to stay down and have a pity party. Like the most high has moved off your pity party. The most high is not. The most high has moved off our faith, our obedience. Our love toward him. Our love toward one another. Finally, verse 24 says, The Lord can put it... Oh, excuse me. I'm reading the wrong thing. For if thou were cut off of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much, shall, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Once again, Romans chapter 11, verses 11 through 24. May the Most High add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and most of all, most of all doers of his holy word. He can put it all back together. This last verse here ends Paul's comparison of Israel as the good, or tame olive tree, and the Gentiles as the wild olive tree. If the Most High can graft in the Gentiles, it's no question that he can graft the Jews back into their own olive tree. When the Gentiles were grafted into Israel, the good olive tree, they were expected to bear the same fruit as all the other natural branches. So with this being said, y'all, it don't matter who you are, what color you are, where you live at, Male or female. The most time looks at the heart. All this other fussing and fighting about all this what you got on and crazy stuff. It looks at the heart. Because you can be dressed up nice with a wicked heart. You can go to church faithfully every Sunday with a wicked heart. So you can't fool the most time. So with that being said, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful blessed day.